urinary bladder. It is considered as one of the most difficult topic in the entire internal medicine. So when I'll be talking to you in urinary bladder, I'll talk not only about medicine of medicine aspect of the bladder, I'll also talk to you regarding anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, patho, pharma, orthopedic, psychiatry, OBG, anesthesia, medicine, surgery, and pediatric. A to Z about the urinary bladder. It's a typical example of integrated approach. This is the need of today's studies. And with this, you can appear for any exam in the world. So with this small introduction, let me tell you the anatomy of the urinary bladder. So this is the lower end of spinal cord. And this terminal part is the conus medullaris. From this conus medullaris arises root from sacral root S2, S3, S4. These root they combine to make the pelvic nerve. Okay, pelvic nerve is a parasympathetic nerve, and this supply detrusor muscle and the internal sphincter. IS is internal sphincter, and DM is detrusor muscle. Now, one thing I like to make your fundas clear that. Internal sphincter is a part of detrusor muscle. Okay. Now, from same S234 segment, again root come and they join to make pudendal nerve. Right. It is a somatic nerve. It supply only external sphincter and one more thing external sphincter is supply has a striated muscle that's why it has got supply by protector now now from l1 l2 segment root arise and they go to hypogastric ganglia from the hypogastric ganglia you get a nerve hypogastric nerve which is a sympathetic nerve And it also supplies detrusor and internal sphincter. Point to be noted in the anatomy that detrusor and the internal sphincter is supplied by autonomic, that means parasympathetic as well as sympathetic. And the external sphincter is supplied only by the somatic nerve, that is pudendal nerve. This is the basic of anatomy. With this background, we talk about physiology of, of micturation. First of all, I'll like talk to you physiology of micturition in a newborn child. We'll talk about pediatric aspect of the bladder. Well, when the bladder got filled up, that means there's increase in the length of detrusor muscle. And once the urine ML is uh, urine volume in the bladder uh, is sufficient, then the efferent sensation go to the lower end of spinal cord. And efferent sensation is carried by all three nerves. That is pudendal, pelvic as well as hypogastric. But of course, the main role is played by the pelvic nerve. But ephron come mainly via pelvic nerve. That means if the pelvic nerve which will st get stimulated and will compress the detrusor muscle and the urine will come out. So to summarize the whole show, efferent by all three nerves but again in these three also, the main role is played by the pelvic nerve and efferent is mainly by the pelvic nerve. Okay. Well, one more thing I like to tell you. In a newborn child, it is a local reflex phenomena. Why local reflex phenomena? Because bladder get filled up and message go to spinal cord, lower end of spinal cord and it get evacuated. Okay. So, now let's see what happened in adults. In adults, it's not a local reflex phenomena. So let's learn the basic physiology in adults. So when bladder get filled up, message come to lower, lower end of spinal cord. Now this message goes to in the brain, in the brain stem, in the PAG. PAG stand for periaqueductal gray. Now the message has gone to PAG that the bladder is full. 
and now the message goes to prefrontal cortex. Now, before I proceed more about physiology of maturation in adult, I like to talk more about prefrontal cortex. Let's learn the basic concept about prefrontal cortex. Well, this is a very, very important area of the body, of the brain. And it is this area which is concerned with, with social behavior. Well, human being is a social animal and we have to follow the rules of society. And all these behavior is controlled by this center. Now, let me talk more about it. What do you mean by rules of society? Well, you, you come for the class. You are wearing your usual dress, what you wear for the class. After the class, you go home. And when you are about to sleep, you change your dress. And you change your night dress, okay, like ka nighty, pajama, knicker, short, etc., etc. Now, can you come to the class with that night dress? No way. You can't come to class with nighty, chappal, shorts, and slippers, etc., etc. Because area of social behavior decide. No, this is not a dress for the occasion. I give you another example. Well, after the class, you have to go to a function, maybe a marriage party. Will you go to the marriage party with the same dress, what you are wearing right now? Ladke to chale vi jayenge. Boys can go, they don't mind. But ladies, no, 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 no way, they will never go. And all the ladies who are watching this video, they will agree with you. Okay? No, because the dress, what you, the lady is wearing right now is appropriate for the class. But that is not appropriate for the for the marriage function. And this all is all being controlled by the prefrontal cortex. And one more thing I like to add to you. And ladies have a better functioning prefrontal cortex as compared to gents. Now you are going to question me. How can you say like this? Look, when a lady is getting dressed up, she needs a mirror of six feet. She wants to look the best from top to bottom. And just to inform you, males have use of mirror only. They have a small mirror use only for shaving in the morning. There is no other use or at the most combing the hair. There is no other use of mirror. I think now I am justified in saying that area of social behavior is much better functioning in females. Well, this was the lighter side of the, the, of the talk. So now you understood the, what the meaning of area of social behavior and personality. Now we come back. So we, what we learned so far that better get filled up, message go to PAG. Now this message go to prefrontal cortex. Well, bladder is full. Matter goes to prefrontal cortex. And prefrontal cortex says, okay, fine. Get up. Go to toilet. Now the person goes to toilet. So once the person has gone to toilet, this prefrontal cortex give a message to PAG. Yes, I have come to the right place. Now this PAG will send message to PMC. PMC is the pontine micturation center. It get activated in the bathroom. And now this will send a message down to the pelvic nerve and pelvic nerve will, will get activated, the urine will pass. This is the normal method of micturation in adult. Okay. With this background, now I will talk to you. I will give you we will continue our discussion on physiology. Now I will give you three situations in the physiology, how the maturation occurs. So the newborn child, well suppose in one of your relative family a newborn baby has arrived and, and you visit as a social courtesy you visit the hospital. Ladies and children are very fond of they will pick up the child like this. And what they say, what they do like, hello, 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 hello. What a sweet child. Such a nice, cute child. And what child do? Psh, suddenly, psh, comes. And the whole thing comes on the face. Okay? Then you feel very bad. But suddenly, the grandma of the uh, that newborn baby will get up and they will say, hello, naughty boy, naughty boy. Auntie ko gila kar diya. Okay, you have, uh, you have wetted the auntie and the child is crying due to wet nappy. The, the nappy is changed. But what do you say? Oh, hey, don't mind, don't mind. Why don't mind? It's a normal, it's a local reflex phenomenon. I hope you understood. Now, 
let's talk the mutilation in the adults, when the person is free to move. Well, blood got filled up, message go to PAG, PAG gives message to PFC, the bladder is full, okay, now this gives a message to PMC and go to toilet, pass urine, normal, okay. Well, situation number three, suppose somebody is sitting in the class right now, bladder got filled up. Well, the tooth length has increased and message has gone to PAG and from from PAG message come to message come to PFC. What the tooth says? What the tooth says to the look? The tooth and PFC are very good friends. The tooth gives a call to PFC. Hello, PFC. How are you? PFC says, Oh, I'm fine. I'm sitting and listening to Dr. Bhatia. Now, PFC says to the Tuzer, And how are you, the Tuzer? The Tuzer says, Very bad, very bad. What happened? PFC says. The Tuzer says, Bladder full, full of bladder, high pressure. And now, the Tuzer says to his friend PFC, Please, please get up. PFC says, shut up. How can I get up? Dr. Bhatia is teaching neurology. I can't get up. Sorry. Okay, sorry. But we should not forget that in the normal body, one ml of urine is being formed every minute. Now, every minute the length of the tooth is increasing. But here, PFC says, shut up. I can't get up. Now, the pressure is very high. Now, what the tooth will do? Now the tooth will in increase in the length without increase in pressure. The tooth is the only muscle in the body which has a unique quality of plasticity. Where the muscle can expand further without increase in pressure. Due to this unique quality of plasticity, we can all hold the urine for a couple of hours more. That is the beautiful point about the tooth. So I hope you understood the physiology of micturition in the three different clinical scenarios. Well, now we talk about pathology and pharmacology of the bladder. In the pathology, suppose we get a disease in the lower end of spinal cord, especially involving the chorus medullaries. Now in this situation, bladder got filled up. Message go to lower end of spinal cord. But this is not functioning. So in that scenario, scenario, neither message can go up, neither message can come down because that part is not functioning. So in that case, what you will be getting is, the, what patient will be getting is distension with overflow. So lesion at S234, we call as autonomous bladder. Large capacity bladder with thin wall of the detuser and there will be distension with overflow. This is so called autonomous bladder. Okay, now with this background, now by now we have understood very clearly that. It is the pelvic nerve which is very important for the micturition. Now we talk about pharmacology. That's why when we use atropine or atropine-like drug or any anticholinergic drug that lead to urine retention, it's a very commonly asked question, whatever exam you write. This is the basic physiology, that's the basic pharmacology, why urine retention occurs. Now we talk about orthopedic aspect of the urinary bladder. So, when the disease happened in the lower end of spinal cord, we got autonomous bladder. Suppose the disease come where, so occurs somewhere in thorax. Thorax typically in, get involved in port spine, TB spine, or maybe secondaries in the bone. And when they are involved, they may hamper the spinal cord. So, now spinal cord is compressed at the level of thorax. Now, urine bladder got filled up. Messi come to lower end of spinal cord. 
Now this want to give message to PAG. But as the disease, as the spinal cord is has been disrupted at the thorax level, message cannot go to PAG. Now in that scenario, blood get filled up and it automatically get evacuated. So in this, and this is known as automatic bladder. The lesion at the spinal cord above S234, like lesion at thorax, small capacity bladder, and it means bladder start behaving like a newborn bladder. This is automatic bladder. Now one more clinical situation. Suppose the spinal cord is perfectly all right and the disease lies in prefrontal cortex. Message go to PAG and PAG gives a message to PFC. What the message is? Bladder is full. Under normal situation, the person should get up, go to toilet and pass the urine. But here, this is not functioning properly. And the moment that he get the PFC get a message that blood is full, the, per the person will get up, start passing urine there and then only. Suppose you find an adult man passing urine in, in front of the whole class, in front of the whole gathering or in the open corridor. That means that is not a socially acceptable behavior. So when the disease occurs in uh, PFC, if the social inhibition is lost, and patient is usually considered as a psychiatric patient because that is not a socially acceptable behavior of passing urine in the public by an adult. This is psychiatry aspect of the urinary bladder. Okay. So in so in cortical lesion, uninhibited bladder, social inhibition is lost. I just discussed just now. Now I'll talk to you regarding medicine and surgery aspect of the a disease so called conus medullaris syndrome. But before I discuss this, let me discuss some basic concept about anatomy. Soul of, you can imagine in your body also, soul of foot is supplied by S1 segment. And back of lower leg is supplied by S2. Back of thigh S3. Gluteal area is S4. Perianal area is S5. Ankle jerk is by S1, knee jerk is by L234. It's a quick recap of the basic concept of the anatomy because this will be used. This knowledge is necessary for the understanding of chorus medullaris. Well, now in chorus medullaris syndrome, we'll talk about medicine and surgery aspect of the bladder. Okay, so let me uh, tell you what the chorus medullaris is. Lower end of spinal cord. This is S5, S4, S3, S2, S1, S5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 5, 1, 2, 3, 4. In actual practice, they are very closely packed fiber, but I have shown some different distances there for busy, for easy understanding. Now, in conus Muller syndrome, a growth arises in the lower end of spinal cord. And this growth can be an ependymoma. Or it could, could, could be a dermoid cyst. Dermoid cyst. So when this growth will grow, it will involve the sacral roots. Now, what the patient will have problem of, we discussed that in the pathology, when the, when the conus medullary is involved, there will be distension with overflow, what we call as autonomous bladder. We studied. Well, suppose you are sitting right now in your OPD. A 70-year gentleman come to you and he says, Doctor, I am not able to pass the urine. And there is uh, urine keeps on dribbling all the time. And what you do, you just examine the patient and you just percuss in the hypogastrium. Hypogastrium, it's a dull. And we have read in our surgical classes that any dullness in a male patient below the hypogastrum is always urinary bladder unless proved otherwise. So 70 year gen gentleman coming to you with distended bladder with dribbling of urine. Now what differential diagnosis will come to your mind immediately? Beyond doubt, it will be benign 
prostatic hypertrophy or some of the people they write as BHP, benign hypertrophy of the prostate. The first differential diagnosis for this. But this is a case of conus medullaris. That means we learn a new thing that the differential diagnosis of BHP is a case of conus medullaris syndrome. Now a question for you. Patient sitting in front of you right now, okay. Remember you are attending the class right now and I say you examine the patient and tell me is a case of BHP or is a case of conus medullaris. So you can stop the video for a second and write down the answer. Well, I am sure you have written the answer by now. The answer to this question is you will check for the perianal sensation or gluteal sensation. Because in this patient, we have learned the basic concept that S5 supplies the perianal sensation and S4 by gluteal, uh, uh, S4 supplies gluteal area. So if you check the perianal sensation or gluteal sensation, in conus medullaris, this sensation will not be there. In BHP, this sensation will be normal. But remember, in any case of BHP, never forget to look for the perianal or gluteal sensation. And one more thing, if S1 is involved, then even ankle jerk will be lost. Ankle jerk will be lost. So never forget to cast, forget to check for ankle jerk in case of a suspected case of benign prostatic hypertrophy. Because ankle jerk will be lost in conus medullaris, it will be normal in case of Will the knee jerk will be involved in conus medullaris? No, because knee jerk, as I told you, is L234, which is much higher, and usually uh, this conus medullaris syndrome does not involve L234. So this you learn the medicine and surgical aspect of the bladder. Now, in anesthesia, a very commonly asked question: in pudendal block, which root we block? It's very frequently asked question. Now I don't need to tell you that it, it will block S234. We supply the perineal area. So now, now you know the answer why in OBG they prefer to give pudendal block due to so many reasons, so many conditions which they give. Why? Because that is the going to supply the perineal area, which is the area of concern for the OBG people. Now the, now the last question regarding biochemistry. You recall your first day in your biochemistry laboratory in your first prop. We do the first experiment. The first experiment is usually they give us a pipette and they uh, that contain 1 ml of the liquid. Now question is how many drops are there in 1 ml of the urine? You can stop the video for a second write down the answer. Well I am sure you have written the answer. The right answer is 16 drops and it is uh, 16 big drop or 64 micro drops. Micro drops. Okay. So this is all about a to Z about uh, bladder. So let me have a last minute division point, a quick recap of what we learned in this particular lecture. Parasympathetic nerve is S234, pelvic nerve, sympathetic L1, L2, hypogastric nerve, somatic S234, pudendal nerve, efferent by all three nerves, but again mainly by, main role is played by pelvic nerve, efferent mainly by pelvic nerve, uh, autonomal bladder distension with overflow when the lesion occurs in S234. Automatic bladder, bladder, bladder start behaving like a newborn bladder when the lesion occurs in thorax. Cortical loss, loss of social inhibition. And conal bladder syndrome is an important DD of BHP and we can differentiate by perianal sensation. And pudendal block, we block S234. Well, friends. There are many more demo lectures you can see in my app, eGurukul app. You have to go medicine by Dr. Mukesh Bhatia, eGurukul app, and you can download at Google's Play. Okay, and this is the website also. And if you want to contact me, you can very well contact me on my personal email ID, a personal uh, WhatsApp number double nine six eight two triple eight. Three, two. You can even join my medicine group also where I will be interacting with all of you, giving you a lot of new updates. But for any DECA, anything you want to contact me, the WhatsApp number is there. And with this, you can appear for any exam in the world. They are not going to ask a single question beyond what I talk to you. Okay. Thank you very much for watching this video.